There's uh, a lot of welcome centers in Iowa. I suppose you passed a few on the interstate. Welcome centers, sometimes you go into them. We as people of Iowa, we want uh, others to be welcomed gracefully when they visit our state, and so we have these welcome centers in our state. But let me tell you about another welcome center. Jesus was a walking welcome center himself. Think about it. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was a walking welcome center. Well, we could go into the scriptures and we could cite story after story after story where Jesus showed hospitality with a capital H. I'm going to share one, one of those stories. It was in the morning that Jesus got up after he had been with his disciples out in the Mount of Olives. And he came into the city of Jerusalem and he was teaching in the temple. And the Pharisees and the scribes thought they were going to trap him. And so what they did was they brought a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery, a very serious uh, uh, omission in their religion at that time, very serious anyway. And they brought this woman to Jesus and they knew they were going to trick him. And they said to Jesus, should we not stone her right now, Jesus, according to the law of Moses? According to the law. Shouldn't we stone her? Well, Jesus bent down and wrote something in the dirt. Nobody knows what it was because the scriptures don't report it, and it was never recorded what he wrote. When he got up from writing in the dirt, he said to all those who were gathered and accusing her, let the one who is without sin cast the first stone. And then he knelt down and he wrote again in the dirt. And we don't know what it was, but uh, quickly, the crowd and those who were the accusers left. It kind of evaporated. And Jesus turned to her and he said to her, where are they? Does no one condemn you? No one, sir, said Jesus, neither do I. Go and sin no more, Jesus said. Go and sin no more. Hospitality with a capital H. Embracing this lady as a person and a child of God. Not embracing her behavior, go and sin no more but embracing her as a person and loving her and forgiving her and keeping her as one of his own. Hospitality, doesn't it include such things as mercy and forgiveness and love and God's grace? Isn't that what hospitality is all about? And yet we know that hospitality in the New Testament is a rather uh, radical notion. It is not without, uh, not without some difficulty if we really pay attention. One time Jesus sent his disciples out two by two. He sent all 12, 12 of them out to extend the kingdom of God. And he said, I want you to go out and preach about the good news of God's kingdom. Heal the sick, drive out the demons. But then he gave him a warning. He gave these disciples a warning. Don't be surprised if you are maligned and ridiculed and even persecuted. And if you go to a village and they won't accept you, shake the dust off your feet against them and go on to the next. This idea of hospitality also can contain some difficulty, some trouble. Jesus was a walking <coughs> welcome center. He certainly was. And he calls his church to be a walking welcome center. If there is one that comes into our midst who hasn't been around for a great deal of time, how can we say welcome to them? Welcome back. Do we say, well, where have you been all these years? We missed you. They used to be a member and now they come back. Or do we say, sure, good to see you. Glad you're here. 
You know, if we have a young person who gets into some difficulty, maybe a young lady who gets pregnant out of marriage, how do we welcome that person? Can we welcome her without saying we applaud your behavior? No, but we welcome you as a child of God, and we care about you, and we love you as Jesus Christ, our Lord, loves you. How would we welcome someone who is of a different sexual orientation than myself? How would we welcome and reach out and say, God loves you, you're a child of God, God cares for you, who you are in your, the essence of your being? It was during the Vietnam War a number of years ago when a religious group in our country called the American Friends Service Committee did something that was a little unusual and a little radical. We were in the midst of this war and every night we would watch our television screens and we would hear these numbers of so many uh, hundreds of, of our young soldiers killed on this particular day. And then the next day numbers again and the next day numbers again and it was a, not a good time in our country. But the American Friends Service Committee, which was a part of the Quaker Church, a church which I respect their stance and position very much, a peace church, quote unquote, as they're called, saw it as their mission from God to provide medical supplies to soldiers who were injured, but not just to the soldiers of the Allied forces and the United States and Great Britain and the others, but to the Viet Cong as well. Now, some would have looked at that for certain as being crossing over a boundary we ought not cross over to uh, aid and abet the enemy. But the American Friends Service Committee, a Christian group, saw it as following in the path of Jesus to draw no lines, to exclude no one, that all are God's child and all who are standing in need of food, of water, or of medical attention are to be ministered to. And so they did. You know, there's some congregations in the state of Iowa that have declared themselves sanctuary congregations they are congregations which welcome illegal immigrants when they need a harbor where it's safe until everything can be resolved and they can take their place either in this community or whatever the future would be. To, to welcome in the gospel is not without its T, capital T, for trouble. I think of uh, Jesus in his uh, message in uh, Luke, when he was talking to the uh, people gathered and the scribes and the Pharisees, and he reminded them of something. And here's what Jesus said. He said, the truth is there were many widows in Israel when there was a famine over all the land, and yet God sent Elijah to the widow of Zarephath to provide for her hunger. And there were many lepers in Israel, but he sent Elisha to heal Naaman the Syrian. There was Jesus who healed the soldier, the Roman soldier's son, and the Roman soldiers were oppressors. Jesus crossed the lines that we probably wouldn't dare to cross. His welcome went out. And I think we'd be hard pressed to find in the scriptures anywhere a spot where Jesus drew a line and excluded unless it would be those who had claimed themselves to be so righteous with God, so right with God, they didn't need anything else. 
and that was their responsibility. Other than that, his ministry was inclusive. I suppose the real test for us, if we are going to be a welcome center, if I'm going to be a welcome center as an individual, a follower of Jesus Christ, if we're going to be a welcome center as a congregation in our ministries, maybe the real test for us would be to ask the question, what trouble have I been in lately because I've extended my hospitality? Welcome home, missionaries. Amen. We'll continue worship with uh, the next song. <laughs> 